So in this video, I will mainly focus on um, heap sort. Uh, so before we come to heap sort, let's try to see how to build a heap uh, given a sequence of numbers in linear time. So given a sequence of uh, let's say n numbers, we want to see how to build a heap uh, with these n numbers. So let's call this function as uh, build heap. Uh, so one way to build the heap is uh, so consider the numbers from i is equal to uh, 0 to n and uh, add all the numbers from 1 to n right so since we are adding n numbers so uh, this is order of this will be n into we know that each of this uh, add will take only at most order log n time so the total complexity of this algorithm we can write that this is uh, order log into uh, uh, order n log n so what is really happening is that you take a tree of this kind uh, so there is a tree here uh, and uh, so when you add this first node uh, this is the only node nothing happens when you take this particular node you are going to add this this already part of the array you are going to call bottom of pp5 function then you are going to add this number then you are going to add this number then you are going to add this number then you are going to add and continue finally add this number and talk, call the uh, bottom of p55 function so in other words uh, this entire function can be written as uh, i is equal to 1 to n so what you essentially will end up calling is uh, uh, bottom up uh, he p5 uh, so you send this he and i from each of this no, for, for, from first one if you call the bottom of e b5 function nothing really happens but after that uh, uh, so from i is equal to 1 to uh, n you call the bottom of e 5 function so notice that uh, uh, if the given sequence is in the decreasing order the last number will be the smallest number when you call the bottom of e 5 function so uh, this smallest number should go up to the uh, root node from the leaf node so that will take uh, at least uh, log n amount of time to uh, <coughs> go from the leaf node to the uh, root node. So the bottom of p 5 when you call it from the um, uh, leaf nodes uh, is going to take uh, order log in time. In other words, uh, if the level of a node uh, is at high, then it can take uh, i time when you call the bottom of uh, p 5 since uh, there are uh, at least n by 2 nodes which are at the leaf node and uh, if i give you the sequence in the uh, decreasing order so then the, all these leaf nodes uh, will take order log n time when you call the bottom of uh, ep5 function so uh, so the total complexity of this algorithm will be slightly greater than is omega of there are at least n by 2 leaf nodes and all of them are going to take log of n time to at omega of log of n time uh, when you call the bottom of p5. So the total complexity of this uh, adding one by one or calling bottom of p5 function will have a complexity of uh, omega of n log n. Right? So we want to think of an algorithm which can build the heap in linear time. So adding one by one at a time is not a good option. Let's flip this and ask the question. So we will look at, uh, so we will consider the following at any point of time so we consider a node add a node here we assume that the left subtree as well as the right subtree both of them are heaps so now we call the bottom of if top down heap 5 from this particular node so that the entire tree becomes uh, on the heap satisfy the heap property so we assume that before you call, come to this node both the subtrees right so satisfy all the nodes in this subtree satisfy the heap property all the nodes in the right subtree also satisfy the heap property now i take this node and call the top down heap 5 function from this node so that will ensure that the entire subtree uh, will be will satisfy the heap property so if i have to apply this in all the leaf nodes i don't have to do anything i start in the reverse direction and instead of calling the bottom of p5 function i will basically call the top down heap 5 function from this node i'll call the top down heap 5 so if uh, you know so that this particular tree becomes uh, uh, satisfy the heap property next i come to this node and then call the top one ep5 then i basically go in the reverse direction so if i have to write the code for it uh, this will be first the n by 2 numbers will not do anything remaining n by 2 numbers while uh, so this i is greater than minus 1 um, right so 
we will call top down uh, heap file so we will take this heap and then call with the parameter i then in the next iteration we have to reduce the index i so now uh, so what we need to notice here is that if a node is had uh, uh, i uh, the height of this node is i then what we notice is that when you call the top down heap uh, function so the number of comparisons done by this algorithm is exactly equal to i if the node is at a height i then so when i call the top down heap function so the number of comparisons done by this algorithm is uh, at most i right so the height of the subtree so if there is a leaf node and then i don't do anything if you go to the non leaf node the number of comparisons this is at uh, height one the, when i call the top down ep5 function the number of uh, comparisons done by this algorithm is i so what i am saying is that if you pick up a node which is at the height high then when you call the top down ep5 function the number of operations done by this algorithm is exactly equal to i so now we want to look at um, how many nodes are there uh, whose height is h right so now if you look at the leaf nodes there are uh, uh, either n by 2 or n by 2 plus one number of nodes in the uh, leaf nodes in a complete binary tree so these are the nodes which are at uh, height 0 so the number of nodes uh, which are at height 0 is anyway going to be smaller than so i will write it as the number of nodes which are uh, um, at height 0 is certainly smaller than n so now what are the number of nodes which are at uh, level 1 uh, height 1 so if uh, so you notice that when the when you increase the height uh, so if there are uh, n number if there are n by 2 number of nodes which are at uh, uh, height 0 then exactly half of them uh, at most half of them can be there in the next level so if there are at most n nodes in the leaf nodes then uh, the number of nodes in the height 1 is actually smaller than n by 2 and uh, so the number of nodes which are at uh, height 2 is slightly smaller than n by 4 and in general uh, if you take any height high the number of nodes which are at height high is smaller than 2 to the power uh, uh, n by 2 to the power i so in general if the height is h which is log of n is going to be number of nodes is going to be smaller than uh, n by 2 to the power h right so when n is greater than uh, when h is uh, uh, <coughs> so when h is uh, log of n then the number of nodes is uh, smaller than equal to smaller than zero that's basically what we are saying so the summary is that if i pick up a node where height is i then this particular when i call the top down ep5 function from that the number of comparisons that the algorithm does is exactly equal to i and if i fix the height as high i then the number of nodes which are at uh, height high is strictly smaller than n by 2 to the power i so total number of comparisons done by this algorithm now is t of n which can be written as sum of i which is going from uh, 0 to h right so the number of comparisons done by this algorithm is i times so that is if the node is at the uh, level high, uh, height high, then the number of comparisons done by this algorithm is i. But in each node, each uh, if the level height is i, then uh, the total number of nodes with which are at height i is uh, smaller than n by 2 to the power i. So I repeat. So how did you get this? We are looking at i, the node which is at level i. If the height of this node is i, then when I call the top down heap 5 function, it does exactly i number of comparisons. And we have also seen that there can be at most uh, n by 2 to the power i number of nodes which are at height i. So uh, we have to simplify this. This is equal to n comes out of this uh, summation because uh, the uh, n is independent of the summation. So this will be n into summation i divided by 2 to the power i where i is going from 0 to h we can show that uh, this is smaller than or equal to t of n is smaller than or equal to this we can show that uh, this summation is 
smaller than or equal to so this summation will be smaller than or equal to 2 times n so this can be shown that we can show that this is uh, smaller than 2 n uh, so this implies that uh, the, the algorithm that we wrote uh, so which is basically from minus equal to n by 2 uh, till uh, so you're basically going in the bottom of uh, the approach but calling the top down EP5 function right so uh, so this will be order n so what remains us to show is that uh, uh, the summation of uh, i by 2 to the power i this number is uh, smaller than 2 right so let's go continue and uh, see why uh, this is the case so we wanted to find the sum of i divided by 2 to the power i where i is going from 0 to h we want to find the upper bound for this so we know how to find uh, summation of uh, uh, so 1 by 2 to the power i right so this is i is equal to uh, 0 to infinity right so this 1 by 2 to the power i we know but we don't know how to find i by 2 to the power i so how did we get the summations of uh, 1 by 2 to the power i so we basically use the fact that summation of uh, x to the power i right so i is going from uh, 0 to infinity if x is smaller than 1 so this converges to 1 by uh, uh, 1 minus x right so but we need a summation of i into x to the power i so what we can do is that we just take this inequality and differentiate on both sides if i differentiate on the side so what i'm going to get is summation of i into x to the power i i is going from 0 to infinity this is equal to so this uh, when i uh, do the differentiation you get 1 by uh, 1 by n as x whole square uh, so in so there will be a minus 1 which will cancel with minus 1 and um, so this is what we get right so uh, when i differentiate 1 by 1 minus x i get uh, 1 by 1 minus x whole square so uh, but here i'll have i minus 1 so when i differentiate this this will be i into x to the power i minus 1 this summation will be 1 by 1 minus x uh, whole square now i multiply both sides by x so what i'm going to get is that uh, summation i is equal to 0 to infinity i into x to the power i will be is equal to x into 1 minus x uh, to the power whole square so now I just need to plug in the value of x is equal to half. If I plug in the value of x is equal to half, I get that uh, from 0 to infinity, i divided by 2 to the power i. So this is equal to 1 by 2 divided by uh, 1 minus 1 by 2 whole square, right? So 1 by 1 minus uh, half is half. The whole square root of it is uh, actually 4. So this is uh, 4 into 1 by 2. Uh, which is basically equal to 2 so which implies that uh, the sum of uh, you know, summation of i is equal to uh, 0 to h i divided by 2 to the power i is certainly going to be smaller than or equal to 2 so hence uh, in the uh, build heap function the total complexity of the algorithm is uh, at most uh, order n so now let's talk about the heap sort algorithm so in the heap sort first we given a sequence of numbers we want to sort them let's say in the decreasing order so we build the minimum heap uh, building the minimum heap we will take order n time so after that what we, we are going to do is that uh, so we'll delete each of these uh, elements one by one so when i delete the first element uh, the, uh, the first element is swapped with the last location right so when i delete the second element it is going to be placed in the last but one's location uh, when I delete the last element, nothing happens, it will be in the first location, right? So, for i is equal to first, you build the heap, this can be done in any time, and uh, so uh, then you delete all the numbers one by one. So, what you get is uh, the numbers. Uh, so, if you report the numbers in the order in which they are deleted, then you get the sorted sequence in the increasing order. But uh, so, if you just access the array uh, h after you uh, deleted all the numbers, you get the numbers in the uh, decreasing order right so the heap sort just fills the heap in linear time and then deletes uh, each of these numbers one by one uh, so if you um, report the numbers in the order in which they are deleted uh, then uh, so what you basically get is a sorted sequence in the increasing order so uh, we have a sorting algorithm which uh, works in analog in time so order n for building the heap and then n deletions will take order log in time so the total complexity of this algorithm heap sort is order n plus uh, 
um, n log n which is the order deleting the minimum n numbers and number of times is the uh, most dominating term so the sorting algorithm takes n log n so notice that we are not using any additional space uh, in this case right so so we have also seen that uh, any comparison based sorting algorithm requires n, log, uh, n number of comparisons in that sense uh, heap sort is a uh, is the best uh, sorting algorithm that you can have in summary we can uh, so if you look at the binary heap uh, we can do the following operations in order log n which is the height of the tree uh, that is bottom of ep5 uh, top down ep5 insert uh, delete minimum decrease key operation and increase key operation and if you want me to uh, delete a arbitrary node let's say delete uh, let's say you give me uh, the heap h and uh, you want me to delete the th element not necessarily the not necessarily the the uh, root of this node so if you want to delete a arbitrary key arbitrary node what we can do is that first you decrease the value of that key to one less than the minimum right so when i call this function uh, the decrease key function will take care of it will decrease the value to one less than the minimum so that uh, so after this the minimum element is the one that i need to delete right so if i decrease to one less than the minimum and after that i delete the minimum uh, so then this key uh, is deleted so you notice that the decrease key happens in order log n time and the delete min is also order log n so the total uh, delete op operation can be done in order log n time so the other operations that you can consider is that if you just want to know the minimum then uh, whatever is there in the root uh, uh, a of z h of 0 will be the minimum element which can be answered in order one time and we have also seen that uh, the build heap uh, takes linear time uh, and uh, we have also seen uh, you can build the heap and delete the n numbers so you get the heap sort algorithm which works in n log n uh, time so in this video we have mainly seen the heap sort algorithm which works in n log n uh, time without using any uh, additional space uh, and uh, this is the most optimum uh, sorting, uh, sorting algorithm and uh, so we have uh, so we have we can also think of uh, the binary hap is the uh, minimum priority queue uh, supporting several operations but you may want to think about if i give you two heaps um, how do you merge these two heaps and make it into one heap so one way to do is uh, you can just take the numbers in both of them and then uh, build the heap from scratch so obviously this uh, you know, takes order in time uh, so wherein is the total number of uh, numbers in both the heaps um, but is there a better way to do it uh, so we are not sure um, so so we will not formally prove that uh, using the binary heap uh, you cannot do uh, you cannot merge to uh, two heaps in uh, faster than linear time what we will come back in the next video is uh, talk about a binomial heap where uh, uh, given to uh, binomial heaps uh, with uh, n is the total number of elements in both the heaps we will be able to merge two heaps in order log in time uh, this cannot be done uh, using a uh, in a binary heap so we'll come back to binomial heap in the next video